Corinthians. And uh, I'm going to read some scripture here this morning, try to bring you a thought. It's, it's not too early for us to really begin to get our hearts in preparation for the youth rally. Um, and that's what I'd like to do this morning, get that in our head, in our hearts. Now, what we are attempting to do in April is a uh, tremendous task. It cannot be done by one or two or three or 20 or 30. It takes a lot of preparation and prayer and work. So this morning, I'd like for us to look in 1 Corinthians chapter thir- uh, 12, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 13. You see, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, this tells you how you get into the body of Christ that we've been studying about on Wednesday night. For by one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, capital, are we all baptized into one body? That, now I ain't talking about baptism in water. That's talking about baptized into the body of Christ. Now, whether it be Jews or Gentiles, everybody in the world is a Jew or a Gentile. If you're not in the Old Testament, if you are not a Jew, you're a Gentile. The nations. Now, in Christ, the Bible said there's neither Jew nor Gentile. In Christ, we're Christians. So if if I'm a Christian, there's no difference between me or Jew or anybody else. There's no male, female, big, little, young, old. Uh, In Christ, there is no difference. Outside of Christ, there's all kinds of differences. And so that's what that verse means. Um, Whether be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Verse 14. For the body is not one member. But many. We have many members here in our church. Many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Absolutely, it sure is. If if my, what that's saying is, if my foot could talk, and, and my foot said, hey Danny. I said, yes. And my foot said, How come I never get to hold the fork when you eat? And I'd say, well, I've seen people try to try that. I I have known people that can put their toes in their mouth. I've never been able to do that. Some of you triple jointed, uh, I don't know what might be. I say, you can't do that. Why? Because you're the foot. Does that mean my foot's not necessary? Absolutely not. What What if my hand said, Danny, yes, what what can I help you with? How come I never get to kick football? I said, because you're not the foot. My hand's not my foot. The foot's not your hand. My feet don't hold the steering wheel. My knees do sometimes, (laughs) but not supposed to. Not supposed to do that, you young people. Uh, you, your, your hands, you don't pick your nose with your big toe. Some people might. You, there are just certain things you do with your hands and certain things you do with your feet, and all are members of the same body. That's, that's what that scripture is saying. There's, it, the hand not no more part of the body than feet. Your eyes no more part of your body than your ears. See how practical a book the Bible is? The, you're, just because you're... Just because you can't hear with these don't mean they're not important. Just because you can't see with these don't mean they're not important. All the members are important in the body. Now, look here what it said. If, if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, look at verse 16. I'm not the body, is it therefore not an eye? Where were the hearing? Wouldn't that be weird if your whole body was an eye? What if you just said, so all right, pastor, let's get the pastor out here. He's in there. And you just rolled out a big old eyeball about that big. With a big eye. Would that be, that was, you couldn't hear. He couldn't talk. He could sure see from here to Asheville. But, he, but it, his whole, your body, it has different parts. Different members. Now, look at verse number 18. But now God has set the members, every one of them in the body, 
as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? You wouldn't be nothing just a big eyeball or a big ear. But now are they many members, yet but one body. I want to preach this morning on this subject is the kind of members we need in our church. We're getting ready to have a big join the church Sunday here pretty soon. And a lot of folks have asked about joining the church. And so we'll be doing that here in probably a couple of weeks, uh, early March. And uh, that's when you come and you present yourself for being a member of Shining Light Baptist Church. If you're a member of Shining Light Baptist Church, you have to have been saved, baptized, and know what this church believes and become a member of it. And you should. You should, really. You should do that. Um, everybody should, I think. Everybody should uh, if you live in this part of the country. But that don't put you in the body of Christ. That only puts you as a participating member in this church. Some people don't even, some preachers don't even believe in that. Uh, they say they don't, it, it's, it, it don't do any good to have a church membership. But you have to because you have your own property and buildings and stuff. And somebody got to have some kind of say so. And that's what you do. Just uh, physical uh, organization. A little bit of organization. And that's why you have to do that. Now, understand this morning that when I say members, I'm not talking about just members on our church roll. I'm talking about members of people who come here to church. Now, I want to, I want to, I remember a long time ago, I sat down one day and uh, I, I got saved when I was 18 and everything in my life changed. Amen. I started preaching 11 months later. Now, I'll never forget, uh, well, I, 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 when I announced my calling to preach, uh, my pastor said some things about me. My mom, of course, was excited and daddy was sitting at kitchen table, and I came in, and I said something about, I'm going to be a preacher, and he didn't have much to say. Uh, he, he really didn't. He, didn't. he didn't know anything about preachers. He didn't know no preachers. He wasn't raised around preachers, and I, I was probably the first preacher to ever come out of that family. I'm sure. He said his aunt was a preacher one time, uh, uh, and she used to slap people upside the head with a pocketbook, you know, and something with high heels, <laughs> probably like that up in West Virginia or something like that. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I decided I was going to preach. And before that, we had a gospel group, and I played, I played in several gospel groups, played guitar, and we traveled around, done this, that, and the other. And I remember sitting down, and I began to think, you know what? I've only got one life. I've got one life, and according to what all these old people say, it goes fast. And they were right. And so what can I do with my life that would make the most, what can I do with the very, what's the very best thing I could do with my life or way I could spend my life? And I settled it. The best thing I could do with my life is try to get everybody else I can saved and teach the Bible to the ones that are saved. And that's the best thing I can do. I could have done a bunch of other stuff. Some people look at preachers and they say, well, why did he preach? Couldn't find nothing else he could do. Now, that ain't true. If you'll, if, you'll, if you'll check, most preachers could have done a whole lot of other stuff. And so, and the, but the reason I'm, in, I'm doing what I'm doing is I believe the Lord gave me this to do. And I believe that I'm trying to do the very best I can. So I thought, one day when I'm in eternity and I look back, what's the absolute, I don't want to have a bunch of regrets and say I wasted my life here and wasted it there. I'm going to heaven, but I'm going empty-handed. I don't want to do that. So what I'd like to do this morning is recruit, try to help you become the kind of member that, that we need to have. I, I want to say, first, we need faithful members. Faithful members. No church can operate and do be right unless they have people who are faithful to that church. I understand that's very contrary to what most people believe now, even most church people. Most church people have the attitude of now as, look, you ain't putting no strings on me. If I want to show up, I'll show up. And if I don't, I won't. You or nobody else ain't telling me what to do. And that, that is very true. That is very true. I'm not trying to run your life, but I'm just saying you can't have a church without some people that are faithful to the church. You can't run a business without people who will be a worker and show up on the job. You cannot, you cannot have a, a, a 
sports team and just decide when you want to go to a game and when you don't want to. You can't do that. You'll never get nowhere. When, you, when, you're, when you're in sports, if you're a football or baseball or basketball, they say, look, you're a member of this team. You're, you're going to have to be loyal to this team. And, but then when it comes to church, people say, well, I just believe you just, it's okay if you want to go, and it's okay if you don't want to go. I talked to a guy the other day about a mile from here, and uh, I said, you ought to come to church. He said, I don't go to church. Me and, me and Lord has our own church out here. No, no, you don't. No, you do not. If you're able and it's available to you, uh, God wants you to be a part and to be faithful member of the church. If absence makes the heart grow fonder, I know some people sure do love their church, buddy. Uh, they ain't been the coon's age. I mean, they pop in when they want to and pop back out and pop in when they won't feel like it. And pop in. And, and let me say this. Uh, there, it's, 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 a, it, when it's a member. This, my hand is a member of my body. My hand's not a member of your body. My hand is a member of my body. And, and I know people that say, well, Brother Danny, I just get up on Sunday morning and I just, I just go to wherever I feel led and, and I go to... The, you, can't have, you can't be a good Christian like that. And churches can't operate with people like that. Now, I understand. I understand. There are exceptions. There are exceptions uh, when you're sick, of course. And there are exceptions when you have to work, of course. And there are exceptions when something comes up or you have a flat tire or there's a wreck or there's or you, uh, an occasional vacation. I understand all that. I'm not crazy. But uh, what, I, what I'm trying to emphasize this morning is we need some people to say, hey, you know what? That's my church. That's my church. That's where my family gets fed. That's where my kids get married. That's where we have our family's funerals. That's where I get my spiritual food. That's where God helps me in my problems in life. And I'm going to be faithful to my church. What if a, what if a man, what if a man um, uh, works at Ingalls? And he works at Ingalls. And one day he don't show up to work. And they come up and say, where was you? And he said, well... I, I didn't come to Why not? Well, because uh, I went over to Harris's and Teeter's and worked today. They said, what? What do you mean you went to Harris's and Teeter's? That's what some of the country people call it. He said, he said I wanna, I'm in the fruit business. I'm in the food business. Now, wait a minute, man. Your job is at Ingalls. If you're an employee of Ingalls, you don't just go decide one day, let's do something different. I, I'll go over at Food Line. Today. I mean, I, look, there ain't no use getting nervous. Now. I'm just getting started, y'all. I don't even have the, we're not out of the hangar yet. We'll take off in a minute. Uh, uh, if you, you hang on to your seatbelt, fasten your seatbelt. The captain has turned on uh, the no, off the no smoking sign. And, uh, and uh, you can smoke if you want to. I don't, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, I, I'm telling you, people, listen, hey. We, are, we need faithful members. You can't have a church without faithful members. Listen, it's always been. I, I think about, uh, there's people in our church. I'm, I can't name everybody's name. Uh, I understand a lot of people have to work. Right? I get that. I am not being ugly. I'm not being unreasonable. I think about people in our church. We got people in our church, buddy. I know good and well. When it's church time, they're going to walk through that door. I know. I mean, that, you, I remember, I, I think I, our, our deacons, our our, uh, our man, our brother Steve back there. I know. When, listen, when he's not here, he's sick or working. Uh, when Jeff's not here, he's sick or working. And and uh, and uh, them, them, and I, I'm not going to start naming names. There's a bunch of ladies in here, a bunch of people in here. I count 50 people in here uh, that you're just as faithful as a clock ticking. And that's the kind of people that we've got to have. We've got to have. We've got to have in order to have a great church. Uh, years ago, I first read about Old Faithful. You know that guys are up there in please, Yellowstone Park, somewhere up there, uh, and they say every 65 minutes there's hot ball and water. You can set your watch by it, brother. 65 minutes, boom! Hot scalding water shoots up 175 feet. Since it was discovered in late mid 1800s, they said that thing had went off over a million times. They call it Old Faithful. You say, well, I'm, I'm going to go see Old Faithful. Wouldn't you hate to go see Old Faithful and sit there and it's 66 minutes and it's 67 minutes 
and a little a frog comes out and says, Old Faithful said he's going to shoot up in Wyoming today. Old Faithful's gone on vacation. Over, no, when you go there, you'll see. And, and look, don't get mad at me, but some, some of y'all people ain't, ain't near as sick as you try to play out like you are a lot of times. I mean, I'm not again. Listen, people, if you're really sick, I am not fussing at you. But come on, y'all. Miraculously get well on Monday morning. It's a miracle. I feel I better go on in. <laughs> Lord have mercy. How's it been since you heard a, pre a preacher preach the truth? I think it's about 45 minutes ago. We had one up here done it. And I hate, I hate to just keep beating you over the head. And I know people live a long way off. I'm not fussing at you. I know people, we have people live, drive an hour. We have people, and I don't expect you to be here every time the doors. I don't. I don't. What what I what I what irks a fire out of me. You know how long the Super Bowl lasted? Five and a half hours. You know how long the football game lasted? One hour. You can watch the whole Super Bowl in sixty minutes and you sit there 30 minutes before it started and five and a half hours doing it and 11 30 at night six o'clock 11 30 at night so don't talk to me about being fanatical don't don't want to hear it you're a worse fanatic than anybody in here amen I, I mean you watched you watched four and a half hours of commercials Holy mercy. I'll be looking for a job. That's why. Everybody knows a good church. Needs a preacher. I'm not fussing at you. I went home and watched part of the Super Bowl. I'm not saying it's wrong to watch it. I'm not saying it's wrong to watch any guy. I like basketball. You know me? You know me? I love. But good night, people. We're, we need people who are faithful. We need people who are. We cannot. We cannot. I cannot operate a church like when our men don't show up. Our ladies don't show up. Our thing, you can't have a choir when the choir people. You just can't do it. We need faithful members. And then I want to say we need willing members. People who are willing. People who are willing to work. One old preacher jumped up and he said, I'll tell you one thing. He said, my church is 100% willing. He said, 95% willing to do the work and five willing to let them. <laughs> I think that's the truth. I heard about this. Listen, there's, we need people willing to work, willing to work. Once in a while, God will get a hold of somebody's heart and they'll say, and we have people do this. Brother Steve, like if I, I said his name a minute ago. Steve's like that. Sometimes I'll come out here in the middle of the day. And he's out here putting up lights, and he's putting up here. And I tell uh, um, Jeff comes out here, and he's spraying weeds, you know, and and everything like that, you know. Because see, you don't just walk in here. You don't just walk in here and have electricity and air condition right. and, and heat and and a paved parking lot, and you know all this stuff ain't just donated to us. Uh, it takes a lot of work to keep everything clean and to keep everything moving and to keep everything going and to keep everything uh, uh, it, it, uh you know and and I'm not I'm not I'm not being I'm not you cannot operate you cannot operate without people who are willing uh, I I told uh, I told somebody one time I needed help in a certain area and this man was a preacher claimed said he's a preacher and uh, he, he said wait a minute and I told him what I needed done and he looked at me like I'm above that. What he want to do is preach when I'm gone. But he didn't want to get down and do nothing dirty. Like clean the floors. That's right. That's right. Listen, I, I appreciate Ethan. Ethan said the other day, he said, Brother Danny, he said, you need anything done, church? He said, I'll scrub the toilets if that's what I need to do. I said, that right there is the right attitude. That's the kind of man that God will put his hand on and use those that are not too big. Listen, I'll do it. I've cleaned the toilets in here and I'll do it again. It's an honor. It's an honor uh, to get to pick up trash uh, around the house of God and get it looking good. So people, It's a privilege. You're not above that. Nobody is. Nobody, these big shot Christians that think they just show up and bless us with their presence when they decide to. And if they don't, they don't. That's not no good. That's not no good. Amen? Just willing. We just need some people that's willing to sing the choir. Willing to sing the choir. 
You don't have to pass a singing test here. <laughs> you, all you got to do is be saved and right, living right. And get up here and sing for the glory of God. Amen. That's right, brother. Brother, get up here. Get up here. We need some people that's willing to work. Willing to fight. There is a lady right now in New York, New York City, that's on a 21-day fast for us and our youth rally. A lady in New York City. Now, when I preach on fasting, uh, 80% of y'all, will say, that's not for me. That's, that's what you'll do. And I'm not trying to be ugly, but I'm just saying it is. It is. If a woman in New York City can, can do that, good night in the morning, y'all. I mean, she was, uh, that dear lady is fasting 21 days. I'm not, I ain't never fast 21 days. I fast regularly, but I don't fast a long time like that. And you, you know what? I got to thinking about that. I thought, thank God somebody was willing. Thank God somebody's willing. Thank God somebody's willing. Thank the Lord. We got people like, like Miss Phyllis. She's back yonder somewhere. I don't know where she's around here somewhere. That's been teaching Sunday school for 18, nearly 20 years. We got old, old Bill sitting back there uh, that drove a bus. Uh, drove a bus for 20 solid years. They don't get paid for that. They don't get a salary for that. He said, I think they're crazy. Well, I don't know. You wait till the roll called up yonder. You wait till the Lord starts passing out them rewards. Uh, Brother Dan, I'll probably have to sit in the back somewhere and let these people that get out and knock their, knock their, uh, uh, their do out without dinner every Sunday and go out and ride an old nasty bus at 6 o'clock in the morning. And God's liable to have a different take on that than what people do. Years ago, I had this uh, lady in, in Marion. Her name was Miss Lucy, and Miss Lucy was a, a dear, dear soul. Bless her heart. She was a sweetheart of a lady, and she loved the Lord. She loved the Lord. She said, Brother Danny, she said, I, I can do something. She said, I can get people to come to church if you'll, if you'll give me a bus. And I said, we will definitely get you. I got some money, brought a bus, and give it to her. We was having, we was having something, a big day or Bible school or something. And she said she took and visited all day. And when she visited all day, the next morning she came into church. I think it's that one. And she had 106 people on the bus. Not driving her. On it. You say, preacher, she had 106. She sure did. And I mean, they were crying out of their face up against the windows. When she opened the door, three or four of them fell out like that. You say, wasn't that breaking the law? I, yeah, it was. I didn't, we didn't know it or care back then. And I'm telling you, those kids piled out 106 on a bus. 106. You know, most of the churches in this town, this today, don't even have 106 people in it total. You know what? Uh, so, that's down a little bit, brother. Yeah, that's willing. That's just being willing. That's just being willing. I tell you what, some of y'all's problem is. Everybody wants to go to a big, exciting church where it's growing, and people's getting saved, but not many people want to help build it. That's your problem, right there. That's your problem, right there. Hundred and six people. I appreciate them. I appreciate. Uh, uh, I appreciate our bus workers. I appreciate you that witness on your job. I appreciate you that get your family here every day. Everybody's not the same. I know we have different members, all one body. I understand that. But Lord, people, oh my goodness, we need some willing people. We need some willing people. We need some people that are willing to do the work of God and the will of God. And then uh, we we'll, we need we need uh, those that are willing to work and willing to pray and and willing to give and and willing to help and and willing to do all kinds of things. I tell you what irks me a little bit. I know, I don't usually preach like this. If you're visiting here with us this morning, it's not always this bad. Give me another shot next week. But uh, I'll tell you what bothers me. You hear this a lot. And it bothered me 30 years ago. I'll run up against people and they'll say. Oh, preacher, can I get up and tell the church Sunday I'm going on a mission? Now, either the Lord or the devil don't like what I'm saying. I'm going on a mission trip with our church. 
The flea market's open at about four o'clock. We go up there and buy every battery they got. Yeah. Y'all. And they say, I'm going on a mission trip with my church. And they say, uh, we're all having to raise $1,200. And I'm wondering if, if you if you'll help us with my $1,200. And I've had them tell me that over and over and over, and I want a life. I want a life. I want to say, you've got to be kidding me. You got kids all over this country, and, and, and a lot of these old Southern Baptist churches, I'm not knocking it. Don't you listen to the devil. I am not against people taking mission trips and going to Philippines and building a house. I'm not against that. I think it's wonderful. Here's what I am against. Somebody begging God's people for $1,200 to go on a mission trip to the Philippines and have a nice vacation and meet Filipinos and will not walk across their street and walk their neighbor and give them a track. That's what I'm against. That's a hypocrite. That's a hypocrite. You can like it, lump it, bump it, jump it, choke on it. I don't care. I, really? You're a hypocrite. Tell me. I'm going to the... Yeah, you want to ride an airplane and see the beautiful Mediterranean and, and you know, and you want to... And, and do all that. We're having a mission trip and would not give out a track at a waitress at a restaurant. That's what's wrong with our country this morning. That's what's wrong with our country. I ain't going to support no missionary that don't witness here in America. I ain't going to support no missionary going to Japan or going to China, or going to Africa, or going to that won't even go on, on a bus route. I ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it here, you ain't going to do it there. Oh, it's so, it sounds so exciting. I to me and learn their customs. We got some people around here you can learn some customs from. I was in a trailer park over at exit 103. I went down there one day. Dumb as I am about drugs. And I, I was out there, and we'd split up. Somebody went over, and I was going over, and I went to this trailer, and there was just a, a didn't have no door, just had a, like a sheet hanging. And so I looked at the sheet, and I said, hey, my home. And somebody hollered something. I thought this had come in. And I went in there, and there's a bunch of rough-looking customers They're sitting around there, and there's cooking something. Right in the middle. I was, I was just dumb then. I didn't know. I said, hey, how y'all doing? I'm telling you, it's a wonder they hadn't shot me. Because I they thought, they thought I was a cop. And uh, they just looked at me. Y'all having a good day? They looked at me like, I'm telling you, it felt like. And I thought, well, I guess I'll be seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> I got my track up my head. And I went and told somebody, I said, Brother Daddy, they's cooking meth in there. And don't you know that anything really like that whole house would have blowed to smithereens. Would somebody please tell me what smithereens means? I've said that all my life, and I don't even know what it means. I picture it looks like a bunch of little splinters. What's the official definition of smithereens? The Greek word that means blow to kingdom come. <laughs> But it, I, I, and I, I walked out there and I thought, you know, there's a culture you can go learn. Man sitting outside a restaurant over there and at beside Walmart the other day, and he's laying up like this. And I walked by and he said, "Hey, can you spare me a little money?" He had sores on his face, everything. And I reached in my pocket and I said, "Man, I'll help you buy you something to eat, man." And uh, I asked him his name and he told me. And I said, "Have you ever been saved?" And I'm not going to say his name. He said, "Yeah, I have been saved." And he said, "I'm." I'm in trouble. He's messed up. He's messed up, y'all. There's your mission, Phil. There's your, I can tell you, under any bridge on this interstate, there's your mission, Phil. Please don't tell me about your burden to go to a foreign country. And you got people living under bridges here. You won't even stop and witness to them. We need willing folks. We need people like John Wesley who only weighed 120 pounds and rode a horse thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. Lived in a saddle when he was 90 years old. Preached four and five times a day. You could, they said you couldn't even follow him. He couldn't even keep a conversation with him. He was going here, going there, going there. You couldn't even talk to him. He's, he's busy, 90 years old. For you over 45 that say you're ready to give it up to some younger person. John Wesley 
was the famous Wesley brothers. His brother Charles wrote all those great songs. And he had one thing that our generation of Christians is missing. That is, we don't care about other people. We get letters like that all the time. But tell us, Brother Danny, I appreciate what y'all doing because you care about people. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. They're not interested in what you know. They're interested in if you care about them. They had that earthquake in, tech, in Turkey not long ago, and I'll say this and I'm done. 23,000 people died. And literally thousands were trapped in the rubble. Thousands. 23,000 smashed with concrete and steel and bricks from them buildings. And there was a rescue workers went out there. And those rescue workers braved coal. It was freezing coal. And there was gases, like where gas lines have been busting stuff, oozing up out of the, the cracks of that stuff. Could kill you. And sharp glass and rocks. And they put on coats and put on toboggans and stuff and went searching through that for survivors. And they would go down there, and they said they'd put their ear on that concrete like that, trying to hear if they could hear somebody screaming in there. That's, that's your people under the bridge. That's your people in that trailer park one mile from here. One mile. One mile from right here, there's a trailer park, and that's them. And they said they put their ear down on that concrete like that, and they said they rescued a man that had been in there for, I think, uh, 90 hours. Pulled him out alive. Pulled him out alive. One little baby, nine months old. Had been in there for hours. Still alive. We got it down here on Spencer's route. Same thing. We have it over here on, on Kelly's where she goes over there and board it. Same thing. The emphasis has shifted in the last few years. We've always had problems with, with people on, 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 and alcohol, drugs, stuff like that. But I'm telling you, right now, this, this fentanyl mess, it's killing, the whole, it's killing whole communities, people. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And what we got to do is what's going to be our church's response to that? Raise $1,000 and go on a mission trip? I'm not, please don't take that wrong. I'm all for going to mission trip. We'll go on one if y'all sometimes if y'all want to. Our young people, I'd love for our young people to get together. But for heaven's sake, just do it here. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. That was the Great Commission. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. That's the kind of members that we need. Let's bow our head for prayer. I'm going to ask uh, Miss Desi, she'll come and play something softly this morning. Maybe you're here and you're like me today. Maybe you're here and you're like me and you've been selfish. And you just say, Brother Danny, I know, I know you're right. I need to get out of my selfish mode, do something for God. We're going to pray. If you want to come and pray, all right. If you don't, you can sit there at your seat and pray you're here this morning and you're not a Christian and none of this even makes sense to you just ask yourself the question uh, if I died right now where would I go you say well nobody knows that in the Bible they knew it Paul knew it John knew it Peter knew it the apostles knew it it's in the Bible you can know it too she's playing softly this morning let's pray Let's ask God as we get into youth rally mode here in the next few days. We'll be fasting. We'll be working. You might say, Brother Danny, I know that I need to jerk up on it a little bit. I know that I need to get busy. I know we have elderly people. We have people. I, 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 I get it, people. I get it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not unreasonable. We need members that are committed to God.
committed to church, committed to doing what's right. Have your way in our hearts, Lord, this morning. Thank you for every single person here today. God, do what ought to be done in every heart and every life. Thank you, Lord, for our church. Thank you the doors of Shining Light Baptist Church are still open. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray now for those that are backslid and just chose not to come today. God, that you'd get a their hold of their heart. I pray for those that are sick and were not able to come today. I pray you'd bless them, help them to feel better. I pray, God, that you'd bless all those that work hard and are faithful and are giving and our attendance and our prayers. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless our church. I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to help us to realize that we're all a part of the same body. And Lord, nobody's more important than nobody else. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd use us for your glory. Bless us, Lord, as we get ready for the youth rally. Fill this place full of people and power and praise for the glory of God. Do what ought to be done in every heart and every life. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake we ask it. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All hearts clear. All right. A couple things right quick. I'm going to let you go. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that didn't smack you upside the head once in a while. You know, you're no good. You ain't no count. Um, spiritually speaking. So I hope that you'll uh, take it and uh, do it. You do what God wants you to do. Now listen. Y'all. You know, cameras off everybody don't forget now don't forget if you're going on that trip tomorrow evening i need to know 